Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new discovery about our own galaxy and it's something to do with its shape because it turns out that not only is our galaxy kind of warped but it's also sort of wobbling. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So about a year ago, or maybe a little bit longer than that, I made a video about this new confirmation from Polish astronomers who discovered that our galaxy was after all quite warped. This is something scientists suspected since early 1950s, but obviously because of our location in the galaxy, basically being within it, it's kind of difficult to see what the shape really is. And generally speaking, most galaxies out there are not actually warped. A lot of them are relatively flat and do have a somewhat disc-like shape. And so the fact that our own galaxy is not really that flat is actually a little bit unusual. And so for many years now, scientists have been wondering why exactly does it actually have this unusual warp shape and wanted to actually once again confirm if the shape is warped after all. And though the previous studies usually relied on observations from a much simpler telescope, this time the scientists were able to use one of the most complex observations of star motion across the night skies created by this beautiful telescope you see right here, Gaia Telescope. In the last few years, Gaia was able to collect the motion data for approximately 1.7 billion different stars around our um, solar system. And this data is only growing larger and larger. The next data release is actually going to be sometime in 2020, and the one after that is going to be in 2021. And so we're going to get even more star data available to scientists around the world to study various galactic phenomena. So Gaia Telescope is really a game changer here. And so the scientists who published the paper you can find in the description below did just that. They used approximately 12 million different stars from the Gaia database to determine that not only was our galaxy warped and that the warp becomes really apparent at farther distances, approximately 50,000 light years away from the center, but that on top of that our galaxy was actually sort of wobbling around similar to how a top spins when it's um, not exactly in plane. Now I think the best example I have of this is actually from the mind-blowing movie Inception and if you've ever watched the movie you might remember that the top spinning top was supposed to represent if you're asleep or awake. So if the spinning top suddenly falls it means that you're not sleeping and if the top was actually spinning continuously it meant that you were still asleep. But anyway, that's not really the point. The point here is look at how the top is spinning. It sort of wobbles as it rotates but it doesn't really wobble for every rotation. It wobbles somewhat discontinuously. And interestingly, this is somewhat similar to what the scientists discovered Milky Way is doing as well. So it's not really wobbling once per rotation. For example, if this is a model of our galaxy, and let's just say somewhere here in the middle is going to be the solar system, it usually moves around a galaxy once every 220 million years. This is something we refer to as the galactic year, and you can check out more about this in one of the previous videos. But by measuring the data from the Gaia telescope, the scientists determined that a single wobble of the Milky Way takes around 600 to 700 million years. In other words, approximately three times as long as the single rotation around the galaxy of our Sun. It also doesn't appear to be static and it seems to change over time as well. In other words, by looking at different parts of the galaxy, they were able to determine that it does seem to have a bit of variability. Nevertheless, this seems to be a lot faster than what the dark matter halo should be allowing the galaxy to do, because the halo itself moves much slower. And it's also a lot faster than the so-called magnetic field of the galaxy as well. So in other words, this wobble is still a lot faster than it should be moving. Which is why obviously it creates a lot of mysteries such as for example, so what exactly caused this and how did this happen and is it going to get even worse? And the initial explanations actually did involve either dark matter that might have um, essentially warped the galaxy by coming too close to the galactic plane, or possibly the effects of the magnetic field that may have shifted the stars and the gas around. Unfortunately, none of these explanations really showed us or explained how exactly this uh, got to wobble so much and why is it that it's changing over time. But there is one thing that helped us actually explain all of this, and it's very likely the reason for both the wobble and the unusual shape of the galaxy. 
And the actual culprit is the nearby dwarf galaxy known as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. This is actually a barely visible galaxy that sort of orbits around the Milky Way. And this is kind of what it might look like if you were to look uh, at it a little bit closer. And essentially what this galaxy used to be was obviously a much larger representative of the so-called orbiting dwarf galaxies. But as it orbited around the Milky Way in the last few billion years, it very likely lost a lot of its mass and a lot of its stars, mostly because the Milky Way galaxy is tidally disrupting it. But since its mass is actually really high, or potentially high, it also disrupted the Milky Way. And this disruption happened because this Sagittarius dwarf galaxy orbits in the so-called polar orbital plane. In other words, it actually crosses the galactic plane twice, and then sort of moves around this way. And in the last few years, we've even discovered several of these stellar uh, streams, and one of them we've talked about very recently. And these stellar streams are essentially the leftovers of various interactions between smaller galaxies and our own Milky Way. Some of the previous studies established that it probably looks something like this, and it's about 1 million light years in length. And essentially, as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy orbits around the Milky Way, it's going to leave more and more stars in this stream, and eventually fall apart completely, becoming part of the Milky Way. And today, what's left of this galaxy, that's approximately 70,000 light years away from us, are four large globular clusters and still a lot of dark matter and also a lot of really, really uh, massive stars. And since it already passed Milky Way several times, it's very possible that it lost a huge amount of mass and a lot of stars already, meaning that it probably was much larger and much more massive when it uh, kind of started orbiting around the Milky Way. Judging by its location in the night skies, the scientists think that it probably passed the galactic plane last about 300 to maybe 600 million years ago, and it's very likely going to pass through the galactic plane once again in about 100 million years from now. But the thing is, we're not entirely sure if it's even this galaxy that caused this. There are so many different dwarf galaxies orbiting around the Milky Way, that in reality, the warp itself could be actually the result of the interaction between several different dwarf galaxies and the galactic plane of the Milky Way. So until we get more data from Gaia Telescope and until we are able to analyze it a little bit better, we're not going to know for sure if it was the Sagittarius Dwarf or some other galaxy, of which we have quite a lot to choose from, as you can see. But Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy is actually really interesting because there were even papers suggesting that the reason why the Milky Way has its spiral shape to begin with is actually because of the interaction with this unusual galaxy. In other words, its mass and its total capacity to influence our galaxy is actually really, really high. And so it does seem to have a lot of effect on what's happening in the Milky Way and how it sort of evolves over time. But I guess until we understand what's happening here or until we really find what's causing this warp and what's causing this unusual wobble, I'm going to stop this here. Check out some of the previous videos I mentioned, they should be popping up somewhere above my head and also in the side panel right here. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. And by the way, you can also support this channel by purchasing the beautiful t-shirt that will guarantee you'll feel wonderful for the rest of your life. On that note, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.